Hey everyone, Bob the Canadian here. So I have a weird video for you today. We're not doing a whole game and it's also not uh, just a brief strategy talk either. This one is just the end of a game. So it's a ladder game, it's not a tournament game. And so I've had, I'm the free peoples in this game and I've had more or less bad luck. Like the fellowships just, you know, got hit every other step. So I didn't really want to go through the whole game over again because it's, it's not uh, too far out of the usual. Anyway, it's, it's, it's like it was a good game. It was reasonably well played by both of us. But I, I really just wanted to show the end of this game. So I thought, you know, we could just do the end uh, because it has a few interesting moments to talk about and, and a pretty interesting end anyway. So, OK, so we just started. Um, did we just start? More or less just started anyway. A uh, new turn. So the Fellowship's in Mordor. It's at three corruption. It has Smeagol and Mary left. Uh, this is what the hunt pool looks like. He has conquered Minas Trith and Dol Amroth and Woodland Realm and Dale. So there's this army staring down the army at Erebor. Uh, Gimli got to play Book of Mazarbul earlier and has since then mustered up a nice big stack of dwarves there. Uh, Saruman and the Witch King are here and they're looking daggers at Rohan. So that's where we pick up our story anyways, that uh, Saruman and the Witch King are attacking Fords of Aizen. I played Confusion. He played Servant of the Shadow. Oh, we totally... Oh, I totally forgot to actually roll one die less for this, but that's okay. I would have gotten one hit anyway if this was the re-roll instead. So uh, so I got three hits uh, to his zero. So that's, you know, very lucky for sure. Uh, so he stops and, you know, what else am I going to do with this? I'm pretty much just praying that uh, Helm's Deep holds on and that Pilar Gear holds on a little bit and I'm going to run and hope I get lucky. That's the plan here. So he musters up in Orthanc to recover a little bit. I hide. He starts moving army. So I was a little surprised he didn't just take everything out of Orthanc, but I haven't played a single end card all game and I have four character cards in hand. So I, I get being afraid of uh, ends anyway. So I pass again because, you know, might as well. So he puts Helm's Deep under siege. I could throw Gandalf in there, but that's not going to make a huge difference because he's still going to have four leadership and I'm not that confident that Helm's Deep is going to hold anyway. So. Uh, so I play Mithril Coat instead. Uh, yeah. yeah. He plays Grand. He plays Flocked and only gets one hit. I get zero hits, so that just feels wonderful. I debate using Sudden Strike here. Because if I do get that one hit, that actually makes a difference. That, uh, you know, takes him down from an Elite to a regular. And it might be a We Come to Kill that he's playing. And it might be... Uh, something that relies on using Nazgul leadership, so then that would hurt. So, uh, But I don't because I want to hang on to my Southern Strike for fighting an Erebor, because I'm expecting that to be necessary anyway. Uh, so he plays a Deadly Strife and gets four hits, so that's a bit above average. I only get three, so that feels bad too. Uh, so that means Helm's Deep's probably cooked. Uh, he gets one more hit. I don't. That's that. So I move the Fellowship because at this point... He, he has the ring. He has one ring left. Uh, I've used all the rings already. Uh, Galadriel deleted an eye, and Elrond and Gandalf both helped me move faster because the Fellowship was also not doing super great on movement. Uh, so he has a ring. So this army can come and attack Pilar Gear to get his last point. So at this point, I'm resigned to the fact that I have to attack Dale. So there's a question here. Uh, you also notice that Pippin is sitting here in Dale. Uh, all by himself with this huge shadow army. So I debated moving Gandalf closer and moving Pippin to join that army, but it didn't quite seem worth it. So I moved the fellowship once. I got a one, which is perfectly pleasant. So I just take the corruption and hope that Smeagol's still around for uh, drawing that Smeagol tile there. Because the rest of the hunt pool isn't very nice. Three, three, two, one reveal. Like the one reveal is the only tile that's not. I mean, like not getting revealed is nice, but they're still big numbers, you know. Anyway, so he attacks... Oh, no, he brings the Witch King out because I guess he's expecting me to attack Dale and he's expecting to lose. I'm a little surprised he didn't attack Pilar Gear with his two dice here to like make me do it. And if the dice goes poorly, then then I'd be screwed. But I guess maybe he's planning on, like, yeah, I'm going to take Dale back, but then next turn he'll get Edoras and Pilar Gear, and then what am I going to do? It's unlikely I'll be able to duck next turn. Okay, so I attack Dale... And let's see. Right. I play Mighty Attack here because, uh, you know, I'm rolling at sixes. So this is a good time to to get that Mighty Attack. But he played Words of Power, which is uh, that's nice because that means he cancels Gimli and he's the only companion there. So I can't play it anymore. Uh, so I roll one six 
is about average. He rolls one hit, also about average. Okay, we're back. Right, so Erebor is attacking Dale. Uh, the start of our little adventure in the Dew area. Uh, so he stays. I keep pressing, obviously. Uh, he plays Orc Patrol. I play Sudden Strike. So it's it's always an interesting choice for field battles. Like, this doesn't come up very often. But when you have only three Nazgul leadership, playing Cool as Death, does it actually make sense? You're adding one to your five combat dice, but you're taking away two leader rerolls. So in the sense of just, you know, number of dice that are a hit, you're giving yourself five and taking away four. So that makes it sound like a good idea. But if you happen to whiff on that, then there's two dice that you're not rolling at all on the reroll. So it's 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 a very interesting choice. Anyway, it would certainly feel better if there was more Nazgul leadership there. But. Okay, so with my pre, I get two hits, so that feels great. Then I roll three more hits, and he rolls four hits. So he did get one hit because of Cruel's death, and then he only had one to reroll with anyway. So it turns out turned out to be a great choice. He gets four hits back. So that hurts a lot anyway, because I do not have an infinite supply of dwarves. So I, I have to think about my casualties a little bit, because at first I was just going to take two elites, because I've got Ghibli. He's a captain of the West, but this is the Lord's version. He is not a captain of the West when the defending army is not in a dwarven region. So anyway. Um, so I press, he stays, I get three hits, and he gets two. So uh, that's still good news bears for me on the whole anyway. I sadly don't have enough dwarven regulars to have five in that spot. Right. Uh, sorry, those are the shadow casualties. I have one left in the force pool and none in the casualties. So that's why I have to go three one instead of five zero. Okay, so I press, he retreats. Uh, I leave just one regular behind because I'm hoping to muster more and make this a problem anyway. It's 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 a little tricky anyway. So he uses the ring and he attacks back in Dale. Plays no card. He gets one hit. I get two. So that's, yeah. And now he presses and it's a really tough choice for me about what to do here. Uh, not stay anyway, because I'm probably not going to win this fight. I'm rolling three dice to his five. You know, we both have we're, um, three re-rolls, but, but so obviously I need to retreat anyway. The question is, do I retreat to Erebor or do I retreat to Old Forest Road? Those are pretty much the options. I mean, I could retreat to Northern Rovanian, but that doesn't really make sense. Even if I'm going for Dol or Old Forest Road is still two steps away. It's same, same deal. So, um, if I hide in Erebor, then I'm safer there because I get to reunite with that regular. So they're rolling on more dice if he attacks me, but he's probably not going to attack me. He's probably just going to sit on Dale and all that's left in the dwarf force pool is one regular and I don't need more leadership. I already have plenty. So I end up retreating to Old Forest Road because I'm thinking the only, it's unlikely I'm going to be able to duck next turn. Even with there is another way, it's still, it's just unlikely. Even if I roll five movement, there's only, you know, four tiles that don't reveal me five if I get down to Gollum for that one. But there's, you know, eyes and a red tile in there. So anyway, I'm, I'm hoping that these this army is going to be able to get up to some shenanigans, kind of just praying to powers that be over this game. For that to happen. So yeah, okay, it's one eye, rolls that. I get this roll, which is a pretty good roll, and I seriously contemplate trying to just run, just dunk it, because since I have there is another way, and with three moves, I will undoubtedly take enough damage to get down to Gollum. I do have four moves, so it is possible, and I do have Mithril Cove, but it's still just, it's just very unlikely. So I end up, uh, feel free to post what you would do, but I end up using the Will of the West first, because of course Day Without Dawn is still out there. I don't want to lose a die because he has these two plantiers that he's not going to be able to do much else with. So my only hope here is that he has only three attacks. So the hope here is that I can waste enough of his attacks to survive another turn. So I use the Day Without Dawn to... Uh, sorry, I, I use the Will of the West to play Weeper of the Swifter and bring Gandalf over to this party because now his Nazgul leadership is cancelled. So that makes the odds of winning a fight better anyway. Like, obviously, he still outnumbers me two to one on hit points, pretty much. Uh, so he goes after Erebor which is an entirely reasonable choice. So I attack Dale because I, I had to think about this for a while, about what makes more sense. I could attack Woodland because to survive this turn, like the Witch King can step on Edoras, and even if I muster one in, he can still just step on Edoras. So that's 10 points right there. He doesn't 
really need to get pull our gear back, you know? So the way I need to, what I need to do to win this turn is I need to conquer Woodland Realm and Dale to get three points back so that even if he conquers Erebor, then hopefully he doesn't have enough dice to also get um, Edoras and Dale back. So it's, it's a weird one. So I attack Dale first because I want to, it's, it's tricky, but so I want to attack Dale, play King Brand, and then go get Woodland Realm is what I've decided. Because that way I have more dice for hopefully getting Woodland Realm. Right. The downside is, though, that then I have to try to leave enough behind to defend Dale, whereas if I did Woodland Realm first and then Dale, then they could all happily sit in Dale together. Um, so, yeah, I get lucky. I get my 1-6, and he does not get a hit back, which is what you would expect, but it's still lucky to get it. You know, things go wrong. So he attacks Erebor uh, with the H, which he, you know, uh, mentions later that he feels was probably a mistake. Uh, so he plays Desperate Battle. Makes sense. He gets his one hit. And because of the Desperate Battle, I get one hit back. So he's down to five orcs anyway. Uh, I play King Brand, so that feels good, uh, getting to make that army stronger and get a card draw. And he plays half orcs and goblin on Woodland Realm. So I think he probably should have tried to wait and let me do something else first. Like if he'd waited for me to besiege it first, then he could have played it. And that would have been more devastating because now I don't know that I don't know to expect it. Uh, so anyway, I attack Woodland Realm. And I think about it, and I don't leave anyone behind, which feels bad. Because, but like again, I have no captains of the West here, so I, I really want all five of those for conquering this. And he only has one attacking die anyway. Uh, I suppose I am risking that if he has uh, Ring Race or Abroad or Black Captain Commands, then he can still conquer both of these and get back up to ten points. Were either of those used yet? That's statistics, but that's not. Okay, discarded cards, shadow character. No, neither of those have been used. So I guess I was risking that. And that didn't even cross my mind at the time, actually. Um, so yeah, now he's cursing that he used the army die instead of the uh, the character die. So he picked up a card, I guess hoping for a strategy card to make holding Woodland Realm more likely. So I attack Woodland Realm, and this is a little bit... It's relying on some luck here. I've got 10 dice, and with this no quarter, that means I need two sixes. Uh, and I just go ahead and roll two sixes like it's no big deal, so... Yeah, that feels good. He gets one hit back, which is about the about the average anyway. So, so that helps. Um, that being said, if he did still have the H, I probably would have left a regular behind. Maybe I should have just left a regular behind just in case. He, but if he had that card, then he wouldn't. Then it wouldn't make a difference. Okay, so he attacked Adoras and he brings in the mouth, and I take one corruption for not moving. So that doesn't feel great, but that's that's what I felt like I had to do. Okay, so I once again have the four movement option to try to run this turn, and it doesn't look any better. Like, I took one corruption damage. I, I do have there is another way. I do have Mithril Coat and Sting, so those help, but yeah. So I move to start off with because, and I get a red tile, so that's fun. So that's reassuring me that I made the right call not trying to sprint last turn because it wouldn't have worked assuming I drew this anyway. So so that's two damage and reveal. And I just eat it because I want to keep Smeagol for now. I, I Like, the hunt pool is not that big. I'm really hoping to draw this guy here, uh, the last Smeagol tile. Might be a mistake. I don't know. So... Right. So why I moved first. I guess I was thinking, like, there is no way that, like, just with the amount of attacking dice he rolled, there's no way I'm going to be old able to hold polar gear like i rolled one muster i don't have any cards or companions that can come help there's just there's no way that that guy's gonna hold there's no way i'm gonna retake Edoras. i can take dale but i he doesn't need it anymore because erebor plus the eight from the south is fine so at this point like i, I went for the sprint because i felt like that was the only way and now that there's no way for that to work like i don't have any rings so three movement hide move move there's just no way it's zero percent odds so now the only way for me to win uh, assuming he comes and takes Pilar gear, which he will, is to muster in Woodland Realm, attack, 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 and retake Erebor. So super low odds, but that's literally like the, the only 1% play. Uh, when, so he saw me hover the muster, so he quick finishes conquering Rohan because he's worried I might muster there, which which is valid. I mean, an elite there isn't going to be able to do anything, but, but oh well. 
Okay, so he carries on moving armies towards, and I'm passing because, like, why reveal what you're going to do before you have to? I muster an elite in Woodland Realm. He attacks Pilargear. He rolls three hits. Like, it's like I probably would have retreated to West Herondor just to be annoying, but I'm obviously not going to be able to do anything with that anyway. Because I don't even have any dice, and there's no leadership, so I couldn't attack back anyway, even if I wanted to. Uh, so now I attack Dale. I don't play a card because I want to save these cards for the real fight. It's cool having a brave stand when I've got three companions together. Like, that feels good. Um, a sudden strike would be even better, but here we are. So I, sadly, I have to leave a regular behind because if I don't, then he can move an army here, and then that's just open and free, and I have to spend a die walking back, and now I don't have enough dice to even try attacking Erebor anymore. So this is once again risking um, if he had... Uh, Ring Racer Abroad or Black Captain, then he could go walk, attack, attack. But, you know, then that's at least, you know, him relying on performing a siege. So he thinks about playing New Powers Rising, but he doesn't, which I think makes sense, because what is that card going to do? Uh, I attack Erebor, which obviously is just what I have to do at this point. So he starts bringing that army up just in case I do succeed in attacking it. And here I go. I attack Erebor. So I think my plan is I'm going to play Brave Stand first to try to preserve more of this army, so I'm rolling more dice. It feels good having Gimli as a captain of the West again since I'm in, you know, Dwarven territory. So I am rolling five dice. Anyway, that helps. Um, yeah, so I'm the only card I have that helps me do more damage is Confusion. So I'm going to lead with Brave Stand to try to protect my army and then press with the downgrade the Elite and then press Confusion. That's my plan. Uh, none of these cards really help him. Uh, Relentless Assault Onslaught only work on the offense, really, when you have way more hit points. Great Host is obviously not going to really work, uh, or at least probably not. Durance Bane can't be played. Black Breath can't be played because Nazgul Leadership is canceled. Um, okay, so I attack, and I'm Shining, obviously, so, so he has no card. So I play the Brave Stand, and I roll all these five, so I was just like, man... If only I'd had a Valor or Wizard's Staff or something. That would have been crazy. That would have been four hits right there. But then I roll nothing. Um, the zero hit, so that doesn't feel good. He also rolls zero hit, so that helps. It would help if I had a lot of dice to attack anyway. Then that wouldn't feel so bad. But uh, yeah, so I press because literally have to to try to win the game. So what I'm about to do is my own impression of my genuine reaction as this happened. Okay, because obviously I know what happened. So this this is more or less uh, what came out of my mouth while this happened. I press, and I'm playing Confusion. So I roll two sixes, and then three more. Just what? What is that? What? And then he rolls four hits back. That's the only way that we don't go to another game, is that he rolls five hits. Just, just everything is nuked. Like... What are the odds of that? You know, I rolled five sixes on 10 dice. Like, there's no buff to that. Like, the confusion might have helped, but it didn't need to because I, I needed five hits. I rolled five sixes, and then he rolled four hits back. So I lose. Um, that was, like, the biggest roller coaster of, I can't believe I'm still in this game. Oh, just kidding. No, no, I'm absolutely not in this game, so... Anyway, that was the that was the hilarious end to this game I had with, with Yorick. Um... If anyone wants to calculate what the odds were of that happening, because in, in hindsight, I had heroic death here. And if I'd played it, then I would have lived to make it to another turn. But who expects to roll five sixes and also get hit four times against five dice? Like, that, that, I think we can all agree that was an extremely unlikely thing to happen. So anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in to, to enjoy this uh, end game nightmare for me that ended in, I, I think, the funniest end to a game ever. So, so this is what we never actually killed the units because like it was GG, but this is how it actually looked um, officially stat wise is that he has 10 points because he's conquered all of the South and Erebor is conquered and sitting empty. All that's left in the do line is literally just this one regular here and Gandalf Gimli and Pippin's dead corpses are surrounded by hordes of enemies over here. Just if we'd live to see another turn, I was, I could muster in Dale and recapture Erebor, but nope, that's the end of the turn. That's, that's it. That's it. GG. So yeah, thanks for tuning in. See you next time.